Hey guys, how's it going today? Uh, this is going to be another unboxing video, although it's not going to be on a Friday. I don't think I can wait to put it out that many days. Um, I got something very exciting in this package and something pretty cool in this package. So let's dive right into it. So far, the only thing I've done, there was a packing slip here that had information on it. I took that off. So let's jump right in, see what we've got. I'm very, very excited for this. Thankfully, it didn't take all that long for it to arrive. Okay, I think everything should be... Oh, wait. No, oh, here we go. Okay, let's see what we have here. Seller information. Are there two sets of some of these? Maybe not. Okay, so it came in two packages. It is one lot that I won. Let me just move some of this paperwork, sorry. All right, so I don't know exactly how this is going to be organized. I believe it said 43 photographs. It's like a kid opening up a pack of cards almost. I'm so excited. Um, so I'll give you some brief background before we hit what we're looking for here. Um, these photographs are supposed to be from 1943 to 1944 from the Taganrog area. And... Most of them are from a soldier's standpoint, but they do show some very interesting things. Now here we can see what looks to be an armored train. Um, I'm not sure how many of these have captions. On the photograph on the back, some of them had captions. I guess this is probably troops looking, lining up for supplies maybe. Not entirely sure. We have a half track here with some other, oh wow. Lots of vehicles, very cool. So I'm going to have to go through and really analyze some of these, and if you guys want, I can go back through and point out some of the things I noticed on some of these. Right now, I'm really in particular looking for one thing specific. Um, I'll, I guess I'll try and organize these a little bit. Some of these are just soldiers, some of these are vehicles, some of these are trains. So here we have soldiers lining up. There is an SDK in the background, so that's kind of neat. Um, I wonder what that is. I can't tell offhand. Let me just take this off screen for a second. No, I'm not sure without looking at that with under without a magnifying glass. So we'll take a look at that and set it aside for later. We've got another section from the armored train. Okay, so my guess is that these ones have no writing on it and that these ones do. So this is a uh, DRK, the uh, nurses. Soldier, we've got the uh, snow camouflage as well. Very cool. Soldiers at the train. Pretty cool. Actually, sorry, let me check and see if there's anything on the back. Yeah, nothing on the back for these ones yet. So I'm going to go through kind of quickly because I'm looking for something in particular. Um, got some soldiers. Here. I'm wondering if these are some of the labor force guys that they had enacted in Taganrog during the winter to help build fortifications because they don't have all the normal uniform stuff on, uh, like the, the military belt, but they are wearing hair caps, so I'm not sure. We've got some more of the snow camouflage. Pretty cool. Same here, this is a really nice group photo. So I'm gonna take a look at the back, nothing on the back of that. Sometimes I forget to take a look at the back of all these. I'm thinking that's one of the food, like the mess wagons or whatever they call it. Not sure though, maybe not. I believe that was a chicken. They're getting ready to eat. One of the guys with the winter fur caps. Very interesting. Oh, here we go. Okay. Here we go. Oh, no, it's already bent. Shit. Might be one of the first times I've sworn. I'm not on here. I'm not sure. Um, so here we have Lieutenant General Herman Recknagel observing the troops. I'll have to take another look at that. Um, it might be 5th Company, but I'm not sure. I don't want to assume, really. Every time I assume something on here, I take another look at it after I've had more time to really, really analyze and look at things, and I'm almost always wrong, so. Part of the hobby. Part of learning. There he is again, saluting. Well, being saluted. He is middle, his arm's in the middle, getting ready to return the salute, I suppose. We've got a vehicle in the back. 
so Tegenrog, April 20th, 1943. Major Gru? I'm not sure if that's... A, hmm. I'll have to take another look. Because I'm not familiar, because at Tegenrog at this point, it wasn't just his division... There was other divisions nearby as well. This was before the encirclement at that date. So we'll, we'll have to take another look at that and see. There might be some names listed in the back of my divisional history book that might hint as to which one he is, if he's part of the 111th or not. I'm not sure. If so, the name has not come up in any of the readings I've done beforehand. Um, this one is really nice because you see Hermann, but you also can see that he's got his German cross in gold, which... Probably at this point, he was only shortly, he'd only been wearing it shortly. Um, I believe it was after the winter retreat of 1942, so like early spring, I guess he was probably awarded it. And this is early spring, if this is all from April. Yeah, 420-1943. And there's the Major again. I'll have to do some research into him. Some names on the back, but they've been crossed out, I guess. This is awesome, though. This is, uh, if you saw that community post that I made, this is what I was waiting for. I wanted to see um, what photographs I would have because they're all from the Taganrog area. And I'm, the next video I'm doing is on the breakout from Taganrog. So having these and then photos like this, very cool. Um, I'll give you a little hint now and I'll read the back here, or try to read the back in a second. But essentially, uh, at some points, Russian ships had made it into the harbor under disguise as German ships and started shelling the town. So having something like this where it's soldiers looking out at the sea, that's pretty cool. I'll definitely use that for a visual in the video. Kind of hard to tell. I'm not great at always picking all this up without really dissecting the handwriting. Um, almost like a word-for-word -word thing. Or letter-for-letter, letter, I mean. So this is 1944, so these photographs are later. So I'm guessing that most of these photographs with the guys in their camouflage, that's all from 1944. The other photographs might be from Taganrog. They've got a lieutenant listed. I'm not sure if that's... Oberst or Obergefreiter, I can't tell. We'll take a look at that later. I'm just excited, really excited to have more photographs of Herman in the collection. Um, if you've watched the channel for any extended period of time and seen some of the uploads, you can probably tell that that is something that I pride myself with collecting and doing the research on. And what the hell is this? This is like... Is that food? I hope not. I mean, I don't know. It's something that was, like, greasy and caked onto it. That's really rough. Okay, well, I will... Yeah, dude, that's, like... I don't know. Unless it's been on there for 80 years. <laughs> that's a little rough, but at least it's not one of the uh, photographs that I was exceptionally... Sorry, that I was just waiting on. That struck me as off. But anyways... um. Yeah, no writing on the back of that one, so we'll, we'll save that for later. Taking another look at it. Oh, I guess there's... This is the same photograph. I don't see any differences in the men in their poses. I believe this is just a copy of that photograph. So at least there's two without having that on it. I'm going to keep that one separated so none of that oil or whatever it is spreads. More photographs from the rail line. Now, interestingly, in the in the readings that I have on Taganrog and the breakout and all that, not much is mentioned about the rail lines. There's quite a bit of mention from being supplied by the, the harbor. There's mentions of a few other things, but I, I don't recall hearing much about the rail line. I'm not saying that I disbelieve that there was the rail line or anything, but just nothing came up about that. So I don't know how important the rails were for supply to them in that location. I know with the Russians having the different rail system, the Germans had only occupied that area for about a year before they were almost pushed out. More photographs. I'm guessing that these ones, like I said, are from 1944 with the later camouflages. Um, here we have another photo of Herman inspecting the troops. Um, when I sent some screenshots of the auction listings to some friends, he pointed out that he thought that, I think it was like, 
maybe this one or something that he thought might have been a, a Czech conversion tunic. No, I'm not sure on that. I didn't really look too closely either. Right now, I'm mostly interested in looking at the photographs of Herman and seeing what's going on. Um, for me, what's very unique is that all of the photos I have of him later on, none of them are with him showing his, uh, like the, the cap style hat rather than the general's hat. Um, I do have one where it's in winter, but he's completely covered up and you can barely see any of his other uniform. So this is a dark photograph, kind of blurry guys in what probably is their barracks. More photos from the rail line. I'm wondering what that says on the back there. This guy showed up again. All right, we will take a look at some of this a lot more closely later on. Not all the photographs were listed. So I don't know. You know, some of these I'm just seeing now for the first time. Um, let me take this off screen for just a second. Oh, yeah, okay, so there's Herman. I don't know if he's mid-yelling or giving an order or something, but mouth completely open. We have the band there. Very cool. Very cool. That's awesome. That's a really cool photo. More from the rail line. I guess I probably should have sucked. Well, anyways, this one clearly looks like an armored train. Not all of these look like they're armored. More photographs. This must have been, I'm guessing, a squad that hung out together. Uh, maybe some kind of... I wish there was just a little bit more captioning as to like what unit they were, what company. For all I know, this could be the staff company or something like that. No extra information, so I really don't know. More from the armored train. Pretty neat. Very cool. Just a little bit more information on some of these would be nice. I guess if I have hard copies of photographs of myself and things, I'll make sure to label it a little bit more so future generations would know. Not that I've done anything all that important, just uh, having captions on photographs makes it a lot nicer. This is pretty cool. They're cooking or something? Can't really tell. It looks like they've got a fire or something going. I'm going to try and make this a little bit quicker and then go back in and look at these photographs. Okay, yeah, so that's it. I got super lucky in this in the sense that I didn't have to get into a crazy auction war or anything like that. I'm very thankful for that. Um, these are obviously going to be sitting in my collection for the rest of my days. Um, and this really helps tell the story of Herman through photographs. Um... Sorry, I've got a stuffy nose. I've got photographs now of Herman in 1940, before he receives his Knight's Cross, when he gets his Knight's Cross. I have photographs of Herman taking command of the 111th Division. I have photographs of Herman visiting his new units of the 111th. I've got photographs of Herman now uh, in early 1942, in the midst of the summer offensive, and now here having photographs of him in 1943 at Taganrog, right before their first encirclement, when they eventually will have to break out. Uh, the only other photographs I have of him later from this point are like studio portrait photographs, which are neat, but they're not a soldier's photographs. They're, they're able to be found as reproductions and reprints and things like that. Um, copies being made, not that you couldn't make copies of photographs like these back in the day, but these are from somebody's private collection at that time. So very, very interesting, very, very cool. Um, five photographs, just these five photographs alone for me make it worthwhile, absolutely. Um, I don't think I missed one here. I'm pretty sure I set them all aside. Um, we'll go back through and double check everything later on. And maybe, like I said, with some of the captions on the back or whatever, I'll find something more interesting um, real quick, I'm just going to take a look here and see if any of these names seem familiar, if there are any other names listed. No, right now it's just that major, and I've not heard of him before. So I'm guessing that this is his unit being reviewed by Herman. Um, 
yeah, I'll have to try and do some research. Maybe he, I'm assuming he was part of the 111th, being that it's before the encirclement, and that in April they were still mostly together as a unit. There weren't uh, Kampfgruppe yet mixed up with the 336th and the 17th Luftwaffe, but it was the 15th. I always get the Luftwaffe division confused. Anyway, um, for now, that's it here. I do have one other kind of little thing to show, and this hasn't taken too terribly long yet. So I'll show you that, and then we'll wrap it up here. Um, now this one isn't directly related to Herman, but I do like to try and piece together things from the units that he was involved in. Okay. Um, let's see here, I'll try and get this off. Okay, so I do tend to enjoy collecting certain styles of photographs as well. So this kind of this kind of fit into with that, aside from the fact that it's unit specific. If I can get this off here. There we go. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so third. Company Infantry Regiment 54. I kind of thought it would show... I'm guessing that's Edmund Schulz. I'll try and do some research on him too, but... Uh, before Herman was in... Uh, sorry, I always say on, uh, I hate it. Before Herman was a divisional commander, he was a regimental commander of the 54th Infantry Regiment, and it was under that unit that he uh, received his Knight's Cross and was at Dunkirk. The soldier here was part of Infantry Regiment 54 and was killed. Um, nothing on the back really saying when... Oh, 1939, I'm sorry. I, not when, but uh, location, sorry. So here it says 92739, so this is during the invasion of Poland. At this time, he was still a regimental commander of the 54th. Um, and it was shortly after Dunkirk and being wounded in 1941 that he would then go to divisional commander. So for about three years, he was a regimental commander. Um, and this one I thought was interesting because it's the grave of a Hauptmann. So hopefully I can do some research on him and get some more details on either where he was killed, what unit he was in really any other information. I, I can see that it's uh, Hauptmann Irvin. I believe that's... Hang on, i got to take it off screen here for a second. Graumau? Probably butchered that. That's kind of a strange one for me. Under a magnifying glass, that'll help a little bit. And then also having uh, the dates there, I can see that it's a really clear photograph. It's just far away. So with a magnifying glass, hopefully we can find out some other information. Sorry about my stuffy nose, I have to keep sniffing, sniffling. Um, that's all I've got today. Like I said, the main thing I was very excited about were these photographs here. Um, so yeah, I, I appreciate you guys watching and seeing the journey as it goes. I've been amazed over the last few years how many photographs of him and his unit I've been able to find online. I thought it would be much harder and much more rare. Um, it is still very interesting to see when it comes up. I'm always excited. It just, uh, it really blows my mind to see how all the photographs have come together into this collection. Uh, at some point, maybe we'll do an overall collection view on just Herman. I mean, that's essentially what my biography videos have been of him, but we'll see. Anyways, I've rambled enough now. I'm going to try and get all these put away. I have an appointment I have to get to soon, so... I will start getting ready to upload this, and I will see you guys soon on another normal video, and uh, enjoy. I'll see you soon. Hey guys, uh, so a quick update. I was able to do a little bit more research, and I did find out a few things. So, uh, let's see, where do we start? On the back of the photograph, as I said in the beginning, it says Tegenrogd, 4th, uh, sorry, April, April 20th, 1943. And then it says... Uh, General Lieutenant Recknagel, and then Major, and then I wasn't quite sure, so what I ended up doing here was going through and looking in my divisional history book, and in the very back of it, there's a listing of all of the officers 
for the most part, that had important roles. Now, the closest thing I could find, it wasn't the same rank, but I'm, some of these guys completely went up in rank throughout their time in this unit, so it makes sense. Uh, here we have Oberst Leutnant Gro, and he would have been the uh, second general staff officer. So that makes sense. Um, I was able to do a little bit more research then, and I did find out that, um, let's see, so this event from the Divisional History book, which I'll, I'll quick read a little snippet from, was for the celebration of Hauptmann, or Captain Richard Schwamberger, receiving his Knight's Cross on the 20th of April. That's when he was receiving it. When I mentioned in the earlier part of the video about the railway line and not really hearing much about that, I also was able to find out that, yes, there was no railway line originally uh, connecting this section um, in Tegenrog to, like, the southern section of the army. So within two months with, um, what do they call it, like, labor battalions and things like that, they were able to build a new rail line connecting to Tegenrog. So it took them about two months, but they were able to do so. Now, from the Divisional History book, on page 215 here, they talk right here about that, and I'll read you the translation that I have. Captain Richard Schwamberger, commander of 3rd Company, Grenadier Regiment 117, received the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross on April 20th, 1943, for his brave actions in the retreat from the, from the Trek and the Don, in a ceremony with a music corps and a procession of honor at the command post of Grenadier Regiment 117, the signalman house on the railway line, codenamed Gustav Oppelmann. The high award was presented to him personally by Lieutenant General Recknagel. The ceremony ended with a friendly get-together. So uh, here you can see what would have been codenamed uh, Gustav Oppermann in the signal the signalman house. So that's very interesting. This all there's much more information here. So this would have been the command post for Grenadier Regiment 117. Very very interesting and very cool to have that piece together. And here you can see the music corps. So this whole ceremony was for Mr. Schwamberger receiving his Knight's Cross. Now. All I have to go off of, as far as what he looked like, is this one photograph. Can I pinpoint him here for certain? No, I can't. Um, you know, looking at ones like this, is it possible he's one of the officers in the background? Maybe, but even under a magnifying glass, it was very hard to get any specific details. Especially the one photograph I have from him is head on, and he's wearing a hat, not a helmet. All these other photos are from side angles and things like that, so it makes it a little bit more complicated. Uh, one last thing then, on the section of photographs that have the soldiers in their winter attire, and it has officer ranks on the back, I did try and compare that in the back of the Divisional History book. I didn't quite see any names that looked identical to it offhand. I requested some help with making sure maybe I didn't misread something given the handwriting and all that. If it's typed, it makes it a heck of a lot easier, but... Being handwritten, sometimes it's it's a little bit of a mess, at least for a non-native reader. So if something comes up and I'm able to make another connection, I'll do a little update video on that, and maybe we can find out some more detail as to what unit those guys were from. And given that it's a whole series of photographs, given the later winter war camouflage, or sorry, later in the war and the winter camouflage that they have, uh, it would be neat to do if we can find a little bit something out about them. But at least here, we know that um, uh, Major Gruhl would uh, end up being an Oberstleutnant, and he was the second general staff officer. So anyways, that's just one little quick thing to add here at the end, and that's really all I can add to it for now. But slowly, all the pieces are coming together, the whole story begins to make more sense. Everything in this divisional history book in some way starts to come out in these pictures. It's just really cool to see, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, uh, just have a good one. Keep on going on, guys.